Um, I prepared a game, one of my favorite games to show you today. And this game played uh, almost uh, actually over 100 years ago. But it's a very nice uh, game between uh, Lasker and Thomas. Okay, so it's a very famous game. So I like you to know this game. And um, so I will be asking you to find these moves. So, and then after that, we're going to be doing lots of very different tactics. Okay, discovery attacks, double checks, many different type of tactics. So D4, F5. Lasker is playing white, and his opponent is Thomas is black. Okay. Yeah. So, do you know the name of this opening? Uh huh. Let's see. Do you know what's the name of this opening? It's not a very popular opening, but sometimes you see even top players they play this. So what do we do? Yes. It's 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 not quite Sicilian. It's uh it's different a little bit. Yeah. French defense. No. See. Okay. Let's go over the Sicilian defense. E4, C5. This would be a Sicilian defense. Okay. So when you see the move E4, C5, then you know this is Sicilian defense. French defense is the opening that I play, my favorite opening, but that's the French defense. Okay? E4, E6 is the French. But I play D4, F5. And anybody else wants to try to guess, maybe, which opening this is? Not a very popular opening, but sometimes even grandmasters play like this. So. OK, so this opening is called Dutch defense. Okay. So remember, this is Dutch defense. Knight c3. White is trying to play e4 to get the control of the center. Okay. Now he plays e6, and now White gets the control e4. Takes knight takes. Now he plays knight f6. Now what do you think is the best move here for white? He just developed his knight, he's attacking your knight. So you have a few options here, but what would be your best move here? Think about it first. Don't rush, think about it for a little bit. We can take, we can go back with the knight, but in the opening we don't want to do that, right? We want to make sure we're quickly developing all our pieces. So what can we do in this position? Okay, let's see. Okay, yes. You could play knight to f6. You could play knight to f6, but see we exchange and he will develop his queen. So it's it's possible, but you have a better move here. You have a better move here. You could do that, but how about trying to develop a piece? Can you try to develop a piece? Me? Yeah. Um, queen two. E, e, queen two, E3. You mean D3? E. E2. No, E, no, F3. F3. Yes. OK. Well, you can play that. That's possible, too. But remember, in the opening, we want to try to develop the minor pieces first. OK? So we try to develop the minor pieces first, and then we develop the major pieces, OK? So which minor piece we can develop here? Which mi minor piece? Yes. Uh-huh. That's an interesting move. That's actually a very interesting move. You can play that move. He played a different move. He played a different move because it's a more active move, OK? Yeah, but I'm trying to take your knight. If you go bishop c4, I can take it, yeah? So, active move here. Let's see. OK? Yes? Um, bishop to Which bishop? d3. Yeah, yeah, bishop d3. I think somebody already mentioned bishop d3. It's a, it's a nice move. It's, a, it's, a, it's absolutely playable move, bishop d3. But what would be the most active move? That you can develop a piece and put pressure on the opponent's position. On which piece you can put pressure now if you develop a piece? Bishop to G, um, bishop to G5. Correct. Bishop G5. Very good. 
So you develop your bishop, and at the same time, what do we call this? Relative pin. Relative pin. Pin, relative pin, right? If it was pinned to the king, it will be what kind of pin? Absolute. Absolute. Uh -huh, very good. You have to know this, yeah? Because we're going to be doing lots of different tactics after this game. So you have to remember, relative pin, absolute pin, okay? And in general, I want you to remember very carefully, it's a good idea for you most of the time, almost always, to develop a piece and put pressure. And now you're pinning him. When you develop and pin, it's almost always a good idea for you, okay? Now, of course, if he takes the knight, we just take the queen. This will be very nice for us. Yay! Okay, bishop e7. Now, what is black threatening after bishop e7? Can we just do anything? Or he's threatening something now? Okay, just, uh, just raise your hand without making any uh, unnecessary noises, yeah? If you think you know the move, what is the threat? Yes. He's threatening the, he's threatening the knight. Aha, uh -huh, yes. And, and I know what move that we should do. He wants to take the knight, yeah? Mm -hmm. Because now he's no longer pinning. See, he, he kind of unpinned the pin. So now, what do you think White should do in this position? There's so many things to do. Protect the knight, capture the knight, move the knight. So really you have to... And some of these options are playable, but what would be the best? <laughs> yes. Captured. Captured the knight, but with which piece? You have two options, right? With the knight? You could do that. You could capture with the knight, but then we take, he takes, and it's, we're just exchanging. So we don't want to exchange everything here, okay? We have a piece in the center, we would like to keep it, but how can we keep that piece? Um, on this bishop, um, bishop which, this bishop? No, no, he, he's going to take you. So you need to take this knight, okay? You need to take this knight, with which piece? Bishop. Very good. Bishop takes. The reason you want to take with the bishop because your knight is in the center. So you want to make sure the knight is centralized and putting pressure, okay? And now you need to continue developing your pieces, okay? Now what would be the next good move here to develop a piece, okay? What would be a good move here? Okay, yes, go ahead. Yeah. Queen where? G3. Here? No, left. Yeah. F3, yeah. You could play that move, but remember, it's very important to remember, you don't want to develop your queen too early. Always remember, minor pieces out first, castle after that, and only then we develop the queen, okay? At the early stage, it's not effective to develop your queen because minor pieces come out first, safety of the king, and then. Remember, it's something you have to follow. Okay? Yes? But in, like, in this position, since the queen is like right there, can you just move it out the way for a couple? Like all those oh, you want to castle this side of the board? Yeah, side. You could do that, but uh, again, I would recommend getting the minor, because usually you get your minor pieces out. Mm -hmm. In order, you know, it's a good idea to get the minor pieces out regardless of where you're going to castle. So remember that. Control the center, step one. I think I've told you this before. Control the center. What is step number two? You remember the five steps? Yes, step number two. Uh-huh, develop the minor pieces. Regardless of where are you planning to castle, develop your minor pieces, okay? And then step number three is? Uh-huh, very good. So that's why I would like you to develop a piece here, minor piece to a good square, yes. Perfect, perfect. And try to develop your pieces to a natural square. So yeah, I don't want you to put a knight here, put a knight here. This is not good. Knight on a side, knight you put here will block your bishop, okay? So important to develop your pieces to natural squares, closer to the center, okay? Now, castles. 
now which piece we should develop next now so we can we, so we are ready to castle bishop right okay yes in the back where do you want to develop the bishop Okay, how many squares do you want to move the bishop to? Um, three. Here? Yeah. You could do that, but... It depends. You yeah, it okay. <laughs> okay, let's, let's, uh, don't rush. Let me explain first, yeah? So if the bishop comes here, it looks like it's losing a piece, but it's not. You could play this move. It's not your best move, because after he goes here, see? You immediately think that, okay, this is a fork. But you always have to look at the moves in between moves. So here, actually, white can avoid losing a piece if he takes on f6 with a check. And then takes, and then he comes back. So he can actually avoid losing a piece, but still, he moves the bishop, and then he has to move again. So it's not very good to do that, okay? So you want to develop your bishop, but you have a better square that will help you to attack in the future. Which square is that for the bishop? Better square. OK, yes. Yeah. Where do you want to develop this bishop? Correct. Bishop d3. This is what he played, OK? Now he's developing and also aiming for the attack. Now he played b6. You know, he should have tried to play knight c6. This is a better move. So he played b6, and here, normally you want to castle. But sometimes, if opponent is not developing his pieces quickly, you want to try to attack if you can. So here, white played a very active move, knight e5, activating his queen, and also opening up the diagonal for the queen to come here. So he played bishop b7. Now, we go queen h5. Now, queen is very active. Now, he goes queen e7, trying to defend. And now, here, white has a very strong tactic. I'm going to be showing you first, OK? I want you to pay close attention. I will show you first. OK, you're raising your hand. You think you have the move? Queen here? Yes. And if rook takes? I thought that the knight would take the king, whoever would, would take the queen. Okay, yeah. that's true, but value of the queen is how many pawns? Nine. nine, right? So look, I you lose nine, you take five, and also you lose three. So you lose Four. twelve pawns, yeah? 12 pounds, you only get 5. So, and not so good, yeah? You're, you don't have a queen now. So, here it's a very strong move here. It's a sacrifice in order to open the position of the king. Oh. It's a sacrifice because after that you have a nice discovery double check. Discovery double check. But first you have to find the sacrifice. So that's a big hint now. You should be able to find the right move here, yes. Excellent, very good. Queen to h7. This is what Lasker played. Now, he takes. Now, don't rush. You have two type of double checks here, but which one is the best? Okay, just raise your hand if you think you know the move here. We sacrifice the queen. We better have something strong, because otherwise we're going to lose the game. Yes. That's one of the ideas. That, that's a double check, too. That's one of the ideas. But you have something better, OK? Something better. Knight to g5. But what would be better to be able to get something also? Yes? Knight to f6. Six, correct. You take the bishop and double check. I think I talked about the double check before. But let's see if you know. What, what is double check? Raise your hand if you know what is double check. And you can explain what's happening if there is a double check. 
Remember, you have to explain. Yeah, what's happening when somebody does a double check? OK, what's happening? Yes? You can't move. You can't block or capture from the checking app to move. Code. You have to move. And what is double check? The two people are checking at the same time. Correct. So this is very good. So double check is when two pieces checking at the same time. And in chess, you cannot, you cannot block two checks in one move. And you cannot capture two pieces in one move. So remember that. So when double check happens, it's very strong. One of the strongest tactical ideas in chess. When this happens, king has to move. If the king has no squares to go to, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Checkmate, right? Perfect. But here, he has squares to go to. Two squares. One square he goes to leads to immediate mate. Let's see if you can find it. This is a bad move. King h8, checkmate in one now. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. In yes. You see it? Go ahead. Um. Checkmate in one. You make one move and you say checkmate. Excellent, correct. Knight to g6. Knights like this are very, very strong. Checking and controlling. See? It's a very strong idea. So he has to come up. Now, with accurate checks, you're going to drive his king all the way down. You're going to bring the king all the way here to g1 and then checkmate. This is one of the one of my favorite games, definitely, because it's very instructive ideas you'll see here. Now, you need to keep on checking. Make sure, when you sacrifice your queen, you have to make sure you have some forcing continuation. Most of the time, you have to have mating threats or keep on checking, OK? Now, what would be the best move here for white? Again, you have choices. And in chess, when you have choices to make, sometimes you make the wrong one. So you have to make sure you ca calculate first. Yes? OK, which knight? We have two knights. Uh, the, one, the one that's on e5. Excellent. Knight e2 g4 check. You need this knight here, because this knight is guarding a crucial square here. How many squares you can go to now? How many squares you can go to? How many squares? Oh. Yes. Two. Two? Which ones? Here? Yeah. Ah, can he? Aha. No. Uh -huh. Only one, right? And that's the square, right? He can go here, he can go here, he can so only square is here. Now keep on checking. You have to keep on you can give him a break. In this kind of positions you can make like a slow move and castle. You have to make sure you keep on checking. Now next. Again, this is a very famous game, nineteen twelve, Lasker Thomas. Continue. OK, well, which pawns? We have few pawns, yeah? They can move. And you have to make sure it's a check, yeah? It's a possi possibility, but you have something better. Because you put the pawn to f4, I can just take it with a king. So you have something better. What would be the better version of that move, huh? Which move? Let's see. OK? Very good. Now, how many squares you can go to? One. Well, if it's zero, then it would have been a checkmate. One. 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 Which one? Uh, to eat the pond, or either two. Pond. Well, if you, you can take rook is guarding it, so you have to only go here, only move. <laughs> now, continue checking. OK, now, what do you do? Yes, go ahead. Correct. Now Kim comes up to f3. Now. Checkmate in three. You're getting very, very close. You have many different checks. You must think a little bit here. You have many different checks, OK? So yeah, but you have to find the right one here. OK, let's see.
Well, bishop e4 actually would have been a checkmate. But there is a problem. Do you see the problem with this move? Ah, see, he takes you. So otherwise, it would have been a very nice idea, checkmate. Better. What would be a better move here? Let's see. Yes? <laughs> okay, I asked him, but it's okay. Yeah, bishop e2. King g2. Now look at this. You, 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 from here, with the sacrifices, you draw all the king all the way here. Very unique game. You don't see this kind of game seen like once in like, I don't know, 50 years maybe. It's very rare to see something like this. So now, checkmating too. You're two moves away from checkmating. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Well, the thing is, he, you know, he's threatening to take the rook. So if we move the bishop to f1, he can take it. Oh. Or he can take the bishop. Can you, can you move? Oh, be really <laughs> well, you don't want to lose your rook. You don't want to lose your rook because rook is a very valuable piece. So you want to see if you can do something. Yes? Bishop to e3. Bishop to? But again, you, I can take your rook. You have to do something so you don't lose the rook. Who can find that r the move that doesn't lose the rook? Yes. Correct. Now, he has only one square to go to. To here, and time to checkmate. Is that a question, or what's the question? Yeah. Can he? No. Can he? Look at the knight. Uh-huh. See? And now, who is going to find a checkmate? Which move Lasker played here? Huh? There are actually two ways to checkmate here. What did he play? Yes. He castled. Very rare that you can castle and checkmate. See? No squares to go to. And the second checkmate, what's the second checkmate? Yes? Absolutely. Oh, in, you know, in fact, maybe, in fact, maybe he played this move. Maybe that's what it says on the da database. But I, I, I prefer the long castle. But also king. Nothing wrong with king d2 checkmate. How is this a checkmate? Because rook is checking. Can the king go anywhere? No. Can it block? No. Can it take the piece that checked him? No. Okay. Then he cannot do this. Then it's checkmate, right? Okay. No questions. Okay, now we're going to move on to the tactics, okay? We're going to do lots of tactics today. So, okay, what I want to do is I want to start off with a couple of double attack ideas, okay? We'll do a few positions on double attack here. So here, it's white to play, and you need to find the winning Continuation that involves double attack, okay? Double attack, double threat, okay? Think about it first. <coughs> hey, Black is up a pawn, and he was thinking, huh, maybe I can win this position. I can try to put my rook on d5 and maybe even win the d6 pawn and try to convert this advantage. But not easy. You have to make a move and have two threats. When you do that, then you have good chances. OK, let's see. Everybody should be looking here. Focus, yeah? <coughs> and try to find a good move that creates two threats. Maybe attacking something and threatening something very strong. Okay? So that would be a double attack if you can find something like that. Okay, we have a couple of hands, so let's see. Go ahead. Okay. Why, why is this a double attack? 
Can you tell us? Okay, so that's one threat. What's your second threat? Your one threat was to take the rook, and second threat is? And do a background checkmate. Very good. Good job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I agree, yeah. <laughs> but uh, that will just delay, yeah? But it's sort of like, yeah, you can just delay, yeah. Okay, well, excellent. Very good. This is a very nice move you found. Because here, white is down a pawn, and it's not so clear if he has much. But queen b4, as you can see, you attack the rook. If you win the rook, you will win this game. You'll be up a rook. So he can't afford to give you the rook. And he cannot go rook b5, as mentioned, because you just take. So he can't just block the queen b8. So most likely your opponent probably moves. And then you go check. He has to put the queen somewhere to block. You take background checkmate. See? It's very important you look for this kind of double attack ideas. You make a move. Double attack, not always. You attack two pieces. Double attack would be something like this. Where you make a move, you attack and threaten a back rank. Okay? Okay. Uh, you have a question about this position? Well, I thought of something else. Okay. I thought the queen would, would go to e3 to, to get the rook and pawn without getting, getting attacked by. Yeah, but that's just the one, I one idea. Yeah, you're just attacking. That's, we couldn't, uh, that's not going to be a double attack because that's just a one attack on the rook. Yeah? Well, what about the pawn? With this pawn? Yeah. Well, that pawn is protected. Double attack is when you uh, threaten two things. Now it's just you attacking the rook. I will move the rook, then it's you don't have a very strong follow-up. Okay? You're not attack. I mean, the pawn is protected, so you can't take it. You have a question? But what if you move um, the queen to d5? You can move the queen to d5 here, but then he can't take. Okay. Ben, can you check this guy's there in the back? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's in the back. If you are being, uh, I hear you talking, please, you know who you are. I'm looking right at you, actually. Please stop. If you would like to talk, please exit the room. Thank you. What? But the rook could get the rook. Well, if you go here? Yeah. No, but the pawn takes, yeah? Okay. Mistakes. Okay. Now, so we're going to move on to the next position. Again, the winning move here is queen b4. Very strong idea, okay? All right. Yes? Um, I thought you were talking about two pieces that would be threatened. That would be what? Like, like two pieces that were threatened. Just like the, I would say. Like two pieces would be attacked, like a fourth. Yeah, I mean, it could be, but now it's this, this idea it creates two threats. Okay, it's not a fork because you're creating two threats. So, attacking this, and you're attacking the rook and creating queen b8, okay? You're creating two threats. That's what you do. We don't have, it, it, yeah, this, this is not really a fork, you know? Because a fork is when you're attacking two pieces. Okay? Okay. About what? <coughs> no, if you're attacking two pieces at the same time, that is a fork. Two pieces. But here we are attacking one piece. Okay? All right. We in a piece. Okay? You're not trying to checkmate. You're, you just need to find a move that will help you to win a piece in this position. Okay? Okay. White to play. And win a piece. 
Not looking for the check, we're winning for that move that creates an attack on two pieces, okay? This idea we can consider a fork too, okay? This one. This one. So let's see. Okay, in the back, yes? Okay, uh, if you take the pawn, but look at the bishop, yeah? Bishop will take the queen. So we can't take it yet, okay? So you need to do something else here. When you're trying to find the right idea here, first you need to look at the pieces that are not protected. Which piece is not protected at all here for black? Which piece? Piece. Which piece is not protected at all for black? Like has no, nothing is protecting right now. Piece. Piece. Okay, which piece is that? The pawn Yeah, but not the pawn, the piece. Piece, like a bishop or a knight or rook. Not a pawn. Yeah, pawn we can take, but pawn we take, we probably have a little bit of advantage. But we have something better here. So which piece is not protected for black here? Okay, yes. You mean the rook? That's rook, okay? Very good. Rook on e8, it's not protected. And also the rook on a8, but we cannot get to the rook on a8. Now, and also, rook here is putting pressure on the bishop, but it's guarded by the queen. But you can find a strong idea here. Okay, let's see if you have the right move here. White to play and win a piece here. You have to see if you can attack that rook and something else at the same time. That will be a double attack. Okay, yeah. Yeah, but I just take. Yeah, I mean, you put the rook, I take, you take. It's like equal trade, yeah? <coughs> but don't trade. Try to see if you can attack this without allowing the trade. If you put the rook, it's just a trade. Something better, you have a strong move here. Let's see. Okay, yes, in the back. Queen goes three up here? Here. You're close. You're very close, but you have a better version of that move, okay? You're very close. But that way you attack the pawn again and the rook. So you need to attack something else here. <laughs> okay. Okay, you sure you have it this time? Okay, go ahead. Queen to a4. He's got it. Very good. Queen to a4. Why is this a double attack? Why? We were attacking the rook. Well, the pawn is defended. What else you're attacking? It's uh huh. That's why it's a double attack. But it's ha defended how many times? How many attackers you have now? Uh huh. Two on one. That means you can take, right? So this we can. This also would be a fork too because we are attacking two pieces at the same time. Nice little move after which you win the piece, okay? A question? Yeah, but isn't it the um, bishop protected by the queen? Bishop protected, yes, but uh, as I mentioned, we have two pieces attacking. When you have two pieces attacking, one defending, that means you can take it, yeah? So that's why. Okay. So again, you have to look for this little moves, you know? Not a long range move or anything, like a little move. Okay? You move here and attack. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, like let's say we go here, 
He moves the bishop. That is a checkmate. Yeah, because he can come up. He can block. So that's a checkmate. Okay? Very good. So the idea here is queen a4. Okay? Okay. Again, this is a little bit more difficult position. It's a double attack again. You need to find. And involves also discovery check idea. Okay, like you do discovery check and you take something valuable. So let's think about it for a few minutes. Think about it before you raise your hand. Just, just think first. What can you do here? You make a move, it looks like just a single threat. But in fact, you have a very strong discovery that is coming up next. So it's a very strong idea here. And when you have a knight like this, this idea usually works. So you have to look for that too. So what can you do? Think about it first for a little bit more. Okay, first move. Knight to e7? Uh-huh. Knight to e7, that would have been a uh, fork, yeah? <coughs> but what can I do? Capture with the bishop. Yeah, that's why this idea is not going to work, yeah? He just captures with the bishop. You have something else here you can try to do here. You make a move and you create a threat. Yes. Yeah, but knight takes d6, I take. It's like an equal trade, yeah? You take, I take, yeah? That's equal trade. Something better here. In the back, yes? Uh, it's it's white, play, white to play first. So if, black, if black is threatening this, yes. But it's white to move here. White to move. So you need to find a... Strong move here, yes. Um, queen of two, e7. Uh huh. The and if what can I do with this piece? Yeah, but then it's protected by the knight. Yeah. Yeah, but then can I just take that too? <laughs> okay, so be careful. Queen is your most valuable piece. If you lose your queen. You probably lose the game. Okay, let's do this. Let's find a move we play and create a mating one threat. Let's find that first, okay? We make a move and threaten checkmate in one. Threatening checkmate in one, in one move. Go ahead. Queen to g4. Very good. Queen to g4. When you make a move like this, it's very strong because you're threatening mate. You're not threatening to win a pawn or a piece. You're threatening a mate. That means he has to react, okay? He has to do something. He can't just say, okay, yeah, you can have the pawn because that's just a mate. Mating threat is g7. So he has few options how to defend. He could push, he could go back and protect, but it doesn't really matter because you're gonna do the same idea against all these moves. And I want to see if you can find that, that idea. It, it, it looked like it was a single threat, queen g4, but in fact it wasn't. Because now you have a very strong idea and you win this game. Very, very strong idea. Okay. Don't rush. That's a good move, but you can only win exchange with that move. Because I can take with a queen and then you take my rook. That's good. But when you see a good move, you look for a better one. Okay. Okay. Get some uh, paper from the bathroom. Okay. Now, who's going to find a move here? 
you're close but try to see can you find a better version of that move you know what can you do here yes Correct. Knight to h6, and what do we call this idea? What do we call this idea? When you move a piece and check, and you attack something that it was blocking. Yes, discovery check. Now, this is very strong check. He cannot take because of the pin. He has to go here, and what do you do? We take the queen, and we win the game. Very strong idea, okay? Very, very strong idea. And now you win the queen. So let's go back and see how this works again. When you have a knight, strong knight on f5, you have to try to activate the queen and threaten the mate. So what do you do again? Go ahead. Perfect. Threatening checkmate. So he has to do something to defend it. So he goes here. And now. What do you do? Knight to h6. Knight to h6, yeah? Don't rush knight to h6. Correct check. If he take he cannot take, it's a pin. So he has to go here only move. And now. What do you do? Very good. Queen to d7. Okay. Very good. Okay. Any questions about this uh, theme that we did today? The double double attack. Do you understand what is double attack now? When you make a move, you create two threats. That's double attack.